Well, I like it very much. It's very nice to see sort of Tim Burton to taking on a slightly smaller canvas. And I think Scott Alexander and Larry Karaszewski are brilliant at writing this kind of screenplay. I always thought that Ed Wood was arguably Burton's best film. And I love the way that it deals with somebody who was making movies that everyone thought was terrible, but dealing with them in a sort of loving way. I also think they did a great job with the, with the Larry Flint story. In the case of this, it is one of those cases in which truth is genuinely strange in the fiction all the stuff that happens in the courtroom sequence and this is not a plot spoiler because we all know that it builds to a courtroom battle yes if you, if you read up the real story it is m more bonkers than the stuff that is on screen people genuinely cross-examining themselves and i think that what burton reminds us is that his the thing that he does best is taking outsider characters but not laughing at them taking them just seriously, I mean, Christoph Waltz's character is played very, very broadly, but actually he's not laughing at the character. He's finding something fascinating about this genuine battle for ownership of the art. There is beneath that as well a discussion about what happens to women artists whose art is taken away from them. You know, the whole point is, well, you know, yes, he's a salesman, but also significantly the fact that he's a man. There is also behind all of this, as we talked about in the interview, the discussion about whether the paintings are any good. Tim Burton, of course, famously worked for Disney, and then when he, when he left as a Disney animator, said that the problem was he couldn't do any more big-eyed creatures. And then, consequently, when he started doing his own animations, he did characters who had holes where their eyes should be, because he said this was a sort of reaction. So there's something actually com which completely makes sense about Tim Burton being fascinated by characters with larger-than-life eyes. I mean, I find those paintings quite creepy. Mm -hmm. I find them, you know, quite really? disturbing. I mean, not just in a kitsch way, but in there is something mm -hmm. genuinely uneasy about them. But I think the, the, the film works because it, it is funny, but it's sincere about its characters. It does attempt to sort of pick apart this story and to tell it in a way which is, you know, slightly accentuated. And, you know, from the very beginning when you see that you know, the milieu in which this is all happening. It looks like Tim Burton Town. It looks like the kind of place that Edward Scissorhands would take place, you know, with the manicured lawns and that particular pastel shade of the world, which he's particularly good at. But you care about the characters. You do genuinely think, actually, yes, I'm, you know, I'm with her in her battle to have this stuff, uh, have this stuff reclaimed. And I mean, I, and it wasn't the story with which I was, did you, were you aware of it anyway before? No, no, not at all. So I thought it told it in a way which was intriguing and engaging. And immediately you've seen it, you go out and you look it all up online because you think that cannot be how it played. And of course, actually, the truth genuinely is strange in the fiction. So I like it. I think it's, uh, I think, think uh, Scott Alexander and Larry Karaszewski have done a terrific job with that screenplay. And how fascinating that they were working on it whilst he independently was developing his own relationship with the story. And then the two things came together it's you know one of those kind of movie synchronicity moments right.